All right, all right, you can stop moaning now. I'm going to get back to making some videos about stocks. And today I'm going to start off with the five areas of the stock market I think are going to make some money until they don't. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. The sucker's going up. Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul. Now, considering I've been doing this for a bit over a year now, I'm still completely new to this investing game. When I'm not at my normal job, I try and do everything I can to learn as much about the current situation of the stock market. And I do all this to make a long-term sustainable portfolio in my ISA on Trading212. But at the moment, it won't be of any surprise to you that the market is just a little bit too crazy. And I think even in these hot areas, there are some opportunities for the long term without having to take such massive risks. Even though everything is apparently way overvalued, we can still find some value somewhere. First, I've got a pretty retro topic which uh, no one's really spoken about for a while. At the start of the crash, everyone was banging on about recovery plays and a lot of people lost a lot of money. Anyone remember Carnival? <laughs> I can't believe it. So many people jumped onto Carnival right at the start of this pandemic and it's gone absolutely nowhere. Carnival Corporation for me was one of the first ways that YouTube really started getting into stocks. Just remember that all of the YouTubers that you follow now with 300,000 to a million subscribers, they were all banging on about Carnival. <laughs> I, I want um, uh, the tanker one. What was the Norwegian tankers? Oh, man. <laughs> But now with the vaccines and such, we definitely have a little bit of a recovery feel coming back. This is the CNN Back to Normal Index, which is showing how quickly the US is getting back to normal. We're showing that most of the states are now sort of 80 to 90% back to normal, with some states even recovering into the high 90s. It shows that the economic recovery is starting to happen. This is good for all sorts of stocks, maybe even some brick and mortar REITs that have been largely flat for a long time. I mean, you're welcome to take a look at Carnival, but Carnival isn't likely to see any earnings until at least 2023, 2024. So Carnival still might not be a good play for recovery. Let me know if anyone out there still holds Carnival. I know a lot of people would have made a little bit of money trading it, but also quite a lot of people would have lost a lot of money, right? Let me know. I want to know. But as you can see, according to analysts, Carnival has zero earnings and it's taken on a huge chunk of debt. It's going to really affect it in the future. We still don't know how well cruise lines are going to come back and we don't know if Carnival can pay for all that yet. For me, I'm still very, very much behind Disney, all behind the Mickey Mouse. And for a massive high expense company like Disney to go up 120% in one year is just crazy. But it has had the release of Disney Plus, which is going stupidly well. And I want to mention a term called Rundle, which we've never discussed on this channel before. Disney and Disney Plus is starting to get a subscription-based system, and it's probably going to start merging its parks and things into that as well. It's going to create a massive bundle of subscriptions where you're going to be able to buy certain tickets on the cheap if you have Disney Plus, for example, or you might be able to get some merchandise at a discount. Disney is really starting to put a few complicated pieces together here. And if you can imagine all those kids watching Star Wars and Disney and Marvel movies while they've been at home the past year, now they want to get out and experience the real thing. Now they're going to be wanting to go to Disney parks. There's a lot of pent up demand there. And I think Disney is going to do very, very well out of the recovery. Airlines were also another massive one like IAG and United Airlines and Delta. And um, Boeing could probably come back pretty quickly as well. I'm not into Boeing at all. I think they're an evil, evil company. And that's coming from someone who sees death all day and invests happily in oil and defense. My personal airline stock is Raytheon Technologies. Raytheon is currently up 23% in the last three months. Didn't do very well at the start of all the panic, but it's very quietly been creeping up. And this is where I'm trying to find my capital gains in this market. Obviously, Raytheon pays a great dividend. It's covered the dividend for the next three years. I have keep on banging on about that on this channel. It's a 100 billion market cap with two companies inside it that are both worth 90 billion. I figured that buying this stock at this price, you're getting two companies for the price of one. That's just my opinion though. I'm not right very often. 
But obviously these companies like Raytheon, Disney, and BAE Systems is one of my big ones for the UK. Obviously the recovery of these companies relies a lot on vaccines being dished out and markets opening back up. And any bad news on the economic recovery could lead to these stocks recovering slower. It's no news that fintech is going absolutely mental. Elon Musk has been playing with people for the past couple of months. He is opening himself up to serious litigations and he's opening Tesla up to some serious problems as well. I don't mean by buying Bitcoin, I mean him hyping it up. He's really putting himself at risk of getting kicked out of the officer's chair at Tesla. That will make Tesla stock do horrible things. But this is an excellent move in my opinion and the 1.5 billion in Bitcoin that Elon Musk has put on Tesla's balance sheet has done wonders for my eToro account. Look, I don't even know how to chart this at the minute. It's just so absolutely mental. But what's happened now is that Tesla has given the green light to all of the other companies to start buying a bit of Bitcoin. Everyone is banging on about Apple being next, but I reckon it's most likely Salesforce. Salesforce is very keen on getting in on Bitcoin. Um, it might be something to look at there. Square is one of the companies which has heavily benefited from all of the hype around Bitcoin and cashless society, but I feel like its business model is a little bit too copyable. There's no moat there. There's lots of other companies that can do exactly the same thing as Square, and I don't understand why Square is so much better than all of the others. At present, I'm currently with JP Morgan, a company with actual earnings. And it's also doing its best to keep up with companies like Square and PayPal. PayPal is probably the one I prefer over Square, but maybe Square is gonna be the one that does it. Believe me, if Square was back down at $11, I'd probably still be buying it. Housing is now making a ton of money in the US stock market. There was a little bit of an issue with material costs coming from lockdown, but now we realize that that was totally short-term news. We're over that and new house builds in America are absolutely booming. This is because of what we call housing inventory. This is a study by Open Door, which is Chamath's new SPAC. Um, we'll get onto that in a little bit, but it shows very clearly that the amount of homes for sale are declining. At the same time, house prices are only going up. This is the perfect little melting pot for house builders. That I think is in the UK as well with, uh, what's the UK one called? V -v 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 Vistry, Vistry, is it Vistry? This is also very, very similar in the UK with companies like Vistry, which could be looking up in the near future. I just don't trust UK house builders. Perhaps I'm just a little bit close to that world. Perhaps American house builders have exactly the same problems. And I'm just happy to invest in them because I don't see it. Anyone who's been around on this channel for a while might know that I'm invested in Lenar Corp. Lenar Corp has done very well in the past three months with a 25% rise. There was a moment there where I was starting to get worried. I was starting to think, oh, my calculations must be a bit off. But the world is now starting to see sense and we're starting to see that rise in all of the housing companies in the US. Also pays a minor dividend of about 1%, which is kind of carefully starting to rise up. You can probably see quite clearly with fast graphs that there's a lot of potential in the next few years and not a lot of downside to be honest. This to me is considered quite a safe medium term investment that is going to start slowly building up its dividend. With these sorts of companies, you're probably not gonna earn 100% by next year. But that's not my style, that just helps me sleep at night. Renewables are going really well at the minute. Seriously, you can buy any wind or solar farm and uh, it's gonna go to that place that orbits the Earth. Um, I can't even say it myself. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. But I think back in June, I did a big video on hydrogen, which by and large didn't get that many views. But in that video, I spoke about loads of top hydrogen stocks that all went absolutely massive. And I didn't invest in one of them with Plug Power, who I talked about quite a lot in the video, becoming the best performing stock of 2020. I think it was the best performing stock, or at least in the top five. When I started looking at it, it was $5. And over the course of the year, it's now gone up to $66. It's, it's 1,500%. 1,500 percent. But I still think that's totally unjustified. I don't think it deserves that market cap just yet. And while I have traded plug in and out as a practice, I do think I would have sold out quite a lot earlier than what it is right now. So I don't think there was any situation where I was gonna earn 1,500% off plug power. 
It's just not in my nature and I'm very cautious when it comes to investing. I did stick to my word though and I did buy a lot of iShares Global Clean Energy. Still, I think this ETF is way overvalued and I have taken profits on this. I'm even considering selling out of it soon. I just think it is so overhyped. Over 10% of its weight is plug power. Enphase Energy comes second, which is a pretty good company itself. Then there's a few European and Chinese companies that I've never really heard of. And then we get down to Siemens and Vestas, which I have held for quite a bit, but I've now sold out of because tax reasons really. And this all does say bubble to me. There's nothing in here now that I can say, yeah, I'd be willing to buy it at these prices. So I need to make a big decision there. All of these companies are now priced for perfection something that I don't think all of them can achieve. The sector in general is going to do very, very well, but hydrogen has a lot of critics, most notably from the EV sector. But then, if you were Elon Musk, would you really want hydrogen to work? What I do personally want out of investing though is companies that do make a lot of money, pay back to its shareholders, and are going to continue in the future in this sector. And one of my favorite picks for this is Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto is a UK mining company that is very quickly picking up its copper base. It's mainly into iron ore, but it's very quickly diversifying into copper. And that sounds pretty good to me. It's a UK stock, it's going to benefit from the EV revolution, and it's earning a lot of money. I think right now its dividend yield is something like 5%. Yeah, 4.81%. And if we're talking about renewables, we've got to talk about a product that is doing even better right now. Oil is on the recovery. Everything is all about renewables and EV projects, everything for that far in the future. We're getting a bit too far ahead of ourselves. But at the moment, oil on a medium term basis is doing very, very well, surprisingly well. We can talk about companies like Exxon and Chevron and Shell all going bust in the long term. But in the short term, over the past three months, it's made 20% plus dividends. These companies are churning out a return in the medium term. I'm not saying that oil is going to be around forever. I don't think oil is going to be around forever. The reason why I'm in Shell is because I feel like they could be part of the renewable revolution. I'm just currently holding on to them because they've got their strategy day in a couple of weeks. I'm going to see if they can say anything good. If not, I'm going to get rid of them. But oil in general is still going to do very, very well until it doesn't. Long term, it's not looking good for oil. Short term, it's only looking good because Saudi Arabia have cut their production. As soon as Saudi Arabia want a bit of that oil price, they're going to start opening up again and that's going to lower prices. And that for me, if you're just in oil because the prices are going up, that's probably when you might want to get out. I'm heavily considering that one myself. And then we got SPACs. It's like the part of the stock market that's got ADHD and now someone's decided to go and give it a gram of coke. Lots of these new companies are banging into the market and making quite a lot of money quite quickly. The SPAC channel on our Discord has to be one of the most active areas. Everyone is looking to get into SPACs. I imagine there's going to be some pretty good ones. The majority of SPACs are doing very, very well. All the Churchill Capital ones are doing well, especially with the CCIV one, which is supposed to be merging with Lucid. Lucid is a car company that's never made a car, but everyone reckons that it's going to be the next Tesla. So you better invest, right? DraftKings is one that's gone very, very well, I believe, and looks like it's got a good business underneath it. Hillion, we don't talk about Hillion, and neither does every YouTuber that ever pumped it. Opendoor, which is Chamas company, which I do believe has some merit, to be honest with you. Nikola Motors, lovely company, great video skills. QuantumScape is the solid state battery company, which is about four or five years behind Tesla, apparently. Um, it seems like people jumped on that a bit early. Lordstown Motors has the possibility of a good product, but no revenue once again. And Velodyne and LiDAR, I don't know why you'd want to go into LiDAR when so many companies are ahead of LiDAR and Elon Musk just doesn't think it's any good. Whatever. But the importance of these SPACs is that they're largely based on revenues that are just made up. No one actually knows how much these companies can earn. It's all about how much you love the YouTuber who's pushing it. And at the start of last year, there were probably quite a few good SPACs that came to market. However, SPACs are a massive guaranteed money earner for their owners. And that will mean that eventually we will start to see more and more riskier SPACs come onto the market and more and more ones that are just completely fake. That's where the market needs to be careful. And I do think that the influx of new investors who are into SPACs will start to suss that out. 
So there's some of the big movers in the market right now. SPACs will eventually get riskier. Oil is almost certainly going to die out eventually. Housing, if interest rates go up, we're gonna have a problem with mortgages. Fintech companies have a huge war on their hands and everyone is hoping that in the next couple of months we'll be going out to restaurants and going and seeing Mickey Mouse and everything is gonna be perfect. As long as we don't see a new strain that's not covered by Pfizer. Thank you very much for watching guys. The investment app that I use is called Trading212. If you want to sign up to Trading212, you can use a link in the description below. If you sign up through that link, you can get a free share that's worth up to 100 pound. Also, I use eToro to buy my Bitcoin and my Ethereum. I just find that's a better place there. There's a link in the description below if you wanted to sign up for that. Just remember that crypto assets are very, very volatile and no one knows where Bitcoin's gonna go right now. Thank you very much for watching guys and if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, subscribe and invest. That's a long one. That was a real long one. Shit. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. The sucker's going up. <laughs>